Welcome, dear listeners, to another spine-tingling episode of Our Scary Stories. I'm your host, guiding you through the winding lanes of terror and suspense. Tonight, as the moon climbs high and the shadows grow darker, we have an eerie tale for you. Set against the backdrop of a secluded village and a foreboding forest, it's a story of fear, courage, and the uncanny. So, gather around, lean in closer, and let your imagination paint a picture from our words. But remember, you may feel a chill creeping down your spine, or a prickling at the back of your neck. Fear not, it's just our story, coming alive. Now, let's venture into the unsettling world of the Witch of Blackwood Forest. In the shadow of looming peaks and a sun that seemed perpetually masked by clouds, there nestled a secluded hamlet known as Emberfall. Snaking cobblestone streets cradled rows of cottages with thatched roofs, while a smattering of chimney tops puffed out tendrils of white smoke that curled lazily into the slate-gray sky. The scent of burning wood, crisp in the morning air, carried whispers of freshly baked bread and simmering broths that tugged at every corner of the nostrils, painting a rustic picture of tranquility. Emberfall was cradled on one side by emerald pastures that grazed the horizon, where sheep and cows lent a lazy sort of life to the vista. But on the other side, a stark contrast awaited, the Blackwood Forest. The trees were an ominous wall of darkness, their gnarled branches clawing at the sky, their shadows casting long, chilling fingers across the village, as though eager to snuff out the warmth of life itself. The forest loomed large over the villagers' psyche, imprinting a shiver that slipped down their spine every time the wind howled through the skeletal branches, carrying an eerie chorus of rustling leaves that sounded like whispered threats. The villagers, from stern-faced farmer Percival to the good-natured baker Matilda, shared uneasy glances as they tightened their cloaks and hurried inside their warm, inviting homes. In recent times, Emberfall had been afflicted with unexplained occurrences. Children vanished, as if swept away by unseen hands. Once fertile fields lay desolate, their vitality sapped, and the crops shriveled under the touch of an unseen blight. Livestock seemed to succumb to an inexplicable madness, their usually docile eyes reflecting a raw, uncharacteristic fear. Over a warm hearth in the tavern, whispers among the villagers grew louder. Their gazes flickered uneasily towards the edge of the village where an isolated cabin sat. Shrouded in mystery and the gossip of old wives' tales, this was the dwelling of the hermit, Morwenna. In their fear, the villagers began to view her solitary existence and peculiar ways with suspicion, branding her with the old world label of witch. She be the one curse in us, grumbled the blacksmith, Conrad, his voice an abrasive growl as he clenched his soot-stained hands. I nodded the washerwoman, Greta, her eyes round with worry. Ever since she moved here, the forest's been odd. It's her, I tell you. However, not all were given to such fears. Young Marion, daughter of Matilda, known for her keen intellect and adventurous spirit, dared to defend Morwenna. That's unfair. She retorted, her brow furrowed. She's different, yes, but different as an evil. We need proof before we condemn. The other villagers shared uncomfortable glances, torn between fear and reason, their mood turning as somber as the darkening twilight outside. As the last vestiges of sunlight vanished, swallowed by the ever-looming Blackwood Forest, the veil of apprehension tightened around in Burfall, the echoes of fear growing louder with each passing hour. On the fringes of Emberfall, nestled against the dark silhouette of the Blackwood Forest, sat an aged cabin, its worn timber a testament to the years it had weathered. A thin wisp of smoke arose from its chimney, curling upwards and dissipating into the gloomy sky. This was the dwelling of Morwenna, the woman cloaked in mystery and a subject of fearful gossip among the villagers. Morwenna was a figure cast in the hue of the wilderness. Her hair, a tangle of wild curls, matched the color of the stormy skies. Her eyes, sharp and intelligent, held the same misty gray as the stones that lined the riverbed. Her skin, weathered by time and elements, carried a rugged beauty, an earthly charm etched by solitude in the passage of seasons. She lived her life in rhythm with nature, her days filled with foraging herbs, observing the forest's shifting moods, and engrossed in her collection of ancient, leather-bound books. Her companions were not people but birds that came pecking at her window, the fox that watched her curiously from the tree line, and the wind that seemed to whisper old secrets. But with the recent grim happenings, Morwenna's solitary existence became the subject of the villagers' suspicion. The whispers of her being a witch reached her, carried on the wind that flowed from the village, seeping into her peaceful life like an icy draft through a crack in the door. 
The rumors stung her like the harsh winter frost, but Morwenna held her peace, choosing to observe and ponder rather than retaliate. One day, when the suspicion grew louder and transformed into accusations, Morwenna stood at the edge of the forest, her gaze fixed on the distant village. She knew her innocence, but also understood fear's power to cloud reason. We need to clear the clouding doubt, she murmured to herself, her voice barely louder than the rustling leaves. Her elderly cat, Shadow, twined around her ankles, its amber eyes reflecting the conviction in Morwenna's voice. The hermit bent down, her fingers gently scratching behind Shadow's ears. But first, she sighed, we need to understand the real source of the calamity. Her eyes narrowed, focusing on the daunting silhouette of the Blackwood Forest. It was no longer the serene refuge she knew. It had turned into an enigma, an intricate puzzle hiding an ominous secret. The time had come to venture deep into its core, to confront its menacing transformation, and to unmask the true evil that lurked within. The dawn was just breaking, spilling hues of coral and gold across the sky as Morwenna set out from her cabin, a solitary figure against the backdrop of the awakening forest. Her keen eyes, usually warmed by a spark of curiosity, now reflected a determined resolve as she embarked on her quest to unearth the truth. Her path led her through the whispering undergrowth of the Blackwood Forest, where even the sunlight dared to tread lightly. But to Morwenna, these woods were an open book, each rustling leaf a word, each bird call a sentence, and each animal trail a paragraph. She knew she needed to read carefully, trace the subtle signs, and draw connections to gather evidence that would prove her innocence and reveal the real culprit. Her first stop was at the village's edge, where the last footprints of the missing children had been spotted. Morwenna knelt down, running her fingers gently over the faint impressions on the earth, remnants of a day filled with laughter and play, now swallowed by a lingering sense of dread. As she examined them, her mind worked in overdrive, pulling in every small detail, every minor clue that could hint at the reasons for the bizarre disappearances. Next, she traversed the desolate fields that had once been a quilt of lush green, now reduced to withered browns and dull yellows. Picking up a handful of the arid soil, she let it trickle through her fingers, her frown deepening at the unnatural dryness. The soil seemed to recoil from life, almost afraid to nourish the seeds it was entrusted with. The once robust land now lay barren and sad, echoing the despair of the villagers. Her final destination led her to the frazzled herds in the pasture, their eyes wide with an animalistic terror that turned the blood cold. The cows and sheep shied away from her approach, their whimpers slicing through the stillness like a sharp blade. Their fear was almost tangible, a testament to the unnatural terror that had swept across their tranquil lives. As the day wore on, the evidence mounted, intertwining like threads in a complex tapestry. Morwenna knew she was only at the threshold of the mystery. The real challenge lay within the heart of Blackwood Forest, within its darkest corners where the sun's rays faltered and the wind dared not whistle. It was there that she would find the answers. As night cloaked the world, Morwenna returned to her cabin, her heart heavy but spirit unwavering. She knew she was alone in her struggle, yet the sense of purpose fueled her, as bright and unyielding as the solitary candle that flickered in her window against the oppressive darkness. For truth needed a voice, and she was determined to give it one. The first fingers of dawn stretched out, brushing against the face of Blackwood Forest as Morwenna prepared to delve into its mysterious depths. She tied her stormy curls back, her gray eyes mirroring the solemnity of her task. A small satchel held her essentials, a thickly woven shawl, an oil lantern, a vial of water, some dried fruits, and a worn leather-bound notebook, its pages thirsting for the revelations she would encounter. Her journey began at the very edge of the village where the green pastures gave way to the stark black foliage of the forest. As she walked, the shadowy canvas of the woods embraced her. Light struggled to filter through the dense canopy overhead, casting a gloom that seemed to muffle even the chirping of birds and the rustling of leaves. Yet, to Morwenna, this was home, a haven of peace and solace. But even she could sense the change. An uneasy quiet had replaced the harmonious symphony of the forest, as if every creature was holding its breath in dread anticipation. Deeper into the forest, she came across trees etched with strange markings, as though scarred by an unknown entity. The usually vibrant undergrowth seemed stunted and withered, and the air carried a peculiar scent, pungent and sour, like decayed foliage mixed with a tang of fear. She noticed the forest creatures were unusually skittish. Squirrels darted into their nests at her approach, birds fluttered away in frenzied flight, 
and even the bold fox that usually watched her curiously from a distance seemed to cower. The forest's heart was racing, its pulse an eerie rhythm that echoed the villager's fear. After hours of exploration, her weary feet brought her to a clearing in the forest, a place she knew well but barely recognized now. A twisted, ancient oak tree that once stood proudly at the clearing's center, its boughs a sanctuary for countless birds, now stood dull and leafless. Its bark was marred by blackened veins, making it appear sickly and devoid of life. The sight clenched at Morwenna's heart, the grim transformation confirming her darkest fears. As dusk bled into the horizon, she took out her notebook, her hand scrawling hastily. Each observation, each unsettling change she noted, was a piece of the horrifying puzzle. But the picture was far from complete. The forest had shared its wounds with her, yet the entity inflicting them remained a veiled threat. With a sigh, she rose from the gnarled roots of the ancient tree. Her resolve hardening. The forest was bleeding from a wound unseen, and it was up to her to expose it, even if it meant venturing further into the darkness. As she took a final look at the blighted oak under the moon's eerie glow, she knew that her mission was far from over. The true evil still lurked in the shadows, and she was determined to bring it to light. With the evidence she had gathered from her exploration of the Blackwood Forest, Morwenna returned to her cabin, a sanctuary of warmth and light against the encroaching night. Inside, the rustic dwelling was a reflection of her life. A pot of herbs simmered on the fireplace, shelves lined with jars of dried flowers, and a wooden table was cluttered with old scrolls and weathered books. She shed her cloak, her fingers trembling slightly as she opened one of her oldest, most cherished books. Dust motes danced in the soft glow of the firelight as she turned the brittle pages, each filled with ancient symbols and tales, legends of her land and stories of old magic. Her gaze moved from one text to another, from cryptic scrolls to handwritten journals of village ancestors. Hours turned into a seamless fabric of time as she pored over the scripts, her mind spinning with theories and deductions. She was looking for something, a thread that would connect the fearful changes in the forest with the lore of the past. As the night thickened, she stumbled upon a faded legend, a tale as old as the village itself. It spoke of an ancient spirit, a force banished into the deepest corners of Blackwood Forest, bound by the magic of a powerful sorceress from an era long forgotten. According to the legend, the spirit was a vengeful entity, born out of a terrible betrayal, its fury capable of causing the land to wither and life to diminish. Morwenna paused, her heart pounding as she pieced together the ominous transformation of the forest and the nightmarish events befalling her village. Could it be that this spirit, trapped for centuries, had found a way to unleash its wrath again? She sat back, the weight of the revelation pressing against her chest. The legends she had cherished, the stories she had considered mere folklore, were now her reality, and the fate of her village depended on her understanding of these forgotten tales. As the first rays of dawn peeked through her window, Morwenna knew what she had to do. The task was daunting, the path ahead fraught with peril, but she would face it, armed with the wisdom of her ancestors and her unyielding resolve. For the echoes of the past were resonating in the present, and she was the only one who could tune into their dire warning. With newfound understanding, Morwen embraced herself for what lay ahead. Her cabin, usually a haven of calm, had become a sanctuary of lore and anticipation. Each creak of the wooden beams and every gust of wind that sighed through the cracks seemed to resonate with the anxiety welling inside her. The old legend had provided a path to follow, and she couldn't help but feel its ominous presence hovering over her. As she studied the aged scripts and grappled with the knowledge of the ancient spirit, she noticed the air around her growing colder, the usual hum of the forest quietening as if the world was holding its breath. Then, without warning, a wave of cold dread washed over her. The fire in her hearth flickered wildly, casting long, grotesque shadows that danced on the walls. An unseen force swirled around her, chilling and malicious. Then, a ghastly vision overtook her. She saw herself standing in a blighted landscape, the once verdant Blackwood Forest now a ruin of darkness. The skies were stormy, the trees devoid of life, and the ground covered in an endless sprawl of decay. In the midst of it all stood a spectral figure, its form blurred but its malevolence clear and frightening. It reached out towards her, an echoing voice resounding through the grim landscape. Beware, intruder, it warned, its tone a storm of fury and anguish. As swiftly as it came, the vision receded, leaving Morwenna gasping in her cabin. She was trembling, the remnants of the vision still echoing in her mind, the spirit's warning chilling her to the bone. 
But instead of overwhelming her, the terror solidified her resolve. These threats won't deter me, Morwenna vowed, her voice firm. Her eyes sparkled with defiance, a silent challenge to the specter that had dared to invade her home. I won't let you destroy our peace. Days turned into a blur as Morwenna engrossed herself in preparing for the confrontation ahead. She studied old spells, learned protective charms, and devised strategies. Her cabin brimmed with activity, its peaceful quiet replaced by a relentless determination. Fear was a constant companion, but it was overshadowed by Morwenna's unwavering spirit, her courage standing tall against the impending storm. As the ancient spirit lurked in the depths of Blackwood Forest, Morwenna readied herself to confront it. Every tick of the clock echoed her resolve, her spirit unbowed. The darkness was gathering, but so was her strength, the tension between them stretching like a bowstring, waiting to snap. Armed with her newfound knowledge and a determination forged in the fires of her courage, Morwenna set forth to the heart of Emberfall. As she approached the center of the village, her senses were flooded with the sharp scent of smoke from the smithy, the distant lowing of cattle, and the chatter of villagers going about their day, oblivious to the horrors lurking at their doorstep. In the village square, she stood atop a wooden platform, her heart pounding like a drum against her chest. She gazed at the crowd that began to form, villagers peering at her with a mix of curiosity and wariness. The murmur of whispers followed her like a shadow as she cleared her throat to speak. Friends, she began, her voice steady. I come bearing truths you may find hard to accept. She shared her findings, revealing the changes in the forest, the withering of the lands, the fear of the livestock, and finally, the ancient spirit. The villagers listened in silence, their faces a tableau of skepticism and burgeoning fear. There's evil in our midst, Morwenna warned, her eyes meeting those of the villagers. And it's our duty to stand against it. She pleaded with them to trust her, to unite for the sake of Emberfall. Her words, though sincere, fell on stony hearts. Fear had made them blind to reason, their suspicion of her only deepening. The very knowledge of this spirit, the blacksmith, Conrad, sneered, is it not proof enough of your witchcraft? Many in the crowd nodded their agreement, their trust in her words crumbling to dust. Defeated and desolate, Morwenna could only watch as the villagers turned their backs on her, leaving her standing alone in the square. Yet, in the sea of distrustful faces, she saw Marion, the baker's daughter. The young girl met her gaze, her eyes shimmering with unwavering belief. A small nod from her, barely perceptible yet filled with understanding, was all Morwenna needed. Her pleas to the village might have fallen on deaf ears, but Morwenna was far from beaten. If she had to fight this ancient evil alone, she would. The path ahead was shadowed and fraught with danger, but she knew she had to tread it. For the sake of Emberfall, she would face the spirit, whether the villagers stood by her or not. As the last light of the sun was smothered by the chilling embrace of the night, Morwenna set forth towards the heart of the Blackwood Forest. The village of Emberfall lay behind her, its warmth dwindling into a distant memory as the chilling grasp of the woods closed around her. She was armed with nothing but her courage and the wisdom gleaned from ancient texts, her heart ablaze with an unyielding resolve. The deeper she ventured, the stronger the oppressive presence became, a malicious gloom that made even the bravest of hearts falter. Yet, she pressed on, her every step an act of defiance against the entity that threatened her home. In the belly of the forest, where the gnarled trees closed in and the darkness was as thick as tar, she found it. The spirit appeared before her, its form a swirling vortex of malice and despair. Its eerie voice filled the air, a chilling gust that swept over the forest. You dare to challenge me, Morwenna. It sneered, the forest trembling under its wrath. I dare, Morwenna replied, her voice resolute. I dare to protect my home. A monstrous roar echoed, shaking the very earth beneath her as the spirit lunged towards her. Morwenna stood her ground, her heart pounding in her chest. She drew upon the ancient spells she had studied, her lips whispering incantations that had not been uttered in centuries. An ethereal shield materialized before her, pushing back against the relentless assault of the spirit. The shield held strong under the onslaught, but Morwenna could feel her strength waning, her energy seeping away with each passing moment. Yet, just as her knees buckled under the strain, she found a reservoir of resolve deep within her. This was her home, her people. She could not, would not, let them down. Drawing a deep breath, she pushed back with a newfound energy, the ancient words tumbling from her lips faster, louder. 
The spirit howled, its form wavering as Morwenna's spell began to bind it. With a final burst of strength, Morwenna sealed the incantation. The spirit gave an ear-splitting shriek, its form flickering before it was forced back, its presence temporarily locked away. As the silence of victory fell around her, Morwenna sank to the forest floor, her energy spent, her body bruised but unbroken. The forest around her, once a place of fear and darkness, now appeared quieter, its terror held at bay by the courage of one determined woman. Her fight was not over, it was merely the beginning. As she made her way back to Umberfall, she knew what she had to do. She needed the villagers' faith, their collective strength. The spirit was bound, but not defeated, and to banish it completely, she would need to unite Umberfall, for their darkest hour was yet to come. Returning to Umberfall after her harrowing confrontation, Morwenna found the village awash in a wave of chaos. Crops withered even faster, livestock howled in terror, and an eerie stillness had replaced the once jovial chatter of children. The shadow of fear had grown denser, its claws clutching the heart of every villager tighter. Morwenna watched the escalating crisis from the sidelines, her heart heavy with worry. The binding spell she had used on the spirit was temporary. Its wrath was intensifying, the curse it had cast on the village worsening with each passing day. She knew she could not defeat this force alone. The villagers, their strength, their collective belief was what she needed. But how could she convince a village that had branded her a witch? How could she ignite a beacon of hope in hearts that were drowning in fear? A ray of hope came in the form of young Marion. The girl sought Morwenna out, her face pale but her eyes alight with determination. I believe you, she said, her voice echoing in the quiet cabin. And I'll help you make others believe, too. Together, they formulated a plan. Marion became Morwenna's voice, carrying her truth to the villagers. She spoke of the ancient spirit, of Morwenna's brave confrontation, and the imminent threat that hung over them. Her words, backed by the worsening condition of Emberfall, became seeds of belief in the infertile land of suspicion. Slowly, the villagers began to listen, their fear making way for a dawning realization. The blacksmith Conrad, the washerwoman Greta, and many others who had shunned Morwenna began to see the truth in Marion's words. Yet, it was not a smooth transition. Some resisted, their fear of Morwenna's knowledge overpowering their reason. But as the days turned bleaker, as their crops failed and their livestock weakened, the last barriers of mistrust started to crumble. And Burfall was in peril, its people trapped in an escalating nightmare. They began to realize that their only way out was to unite, to stand with the woman they had once ostracized. The stakes were higher than ever, and it was time for them to make their choice. As the village teetered on the brink of catastrophe, hope started to flicker, growing brighter in the gathering darkness. The villagers were finally ready to stand together, their survival hinging on the unity they could forge in the face of an ancient evil. As the veil of a frost-kissed dawn lifted, Emberfall found itself united like never before. The villagers, young and old, gathered in the square, their faces etched with determination. The fear that had once gripped them was now replaced by a quiet resilience. Morwenna stood before them, her stormy eyes mirroring their resolve. In the heart of the crowd, Marion stood shoulder to shoulder with her mother, Matilda. Conrad, the blacksmith, had shed his initial skepticism, and Greta, the washerwoman, held her head high, her earlier apprehension now a distant memory. We stand together, Morwenna declared her voice echoing across the square. Not as individuals, but as the heart of Emberfall, ready to protect our home. With the unity of the villagers, Morwenna led them towards the heart of the Blackwood Forest. A palpable tension filled the air as they neared the forest, the trees standing like silent sentinels, guarding the malevolent spirit within. Yet, with each step they took, their resolve hardened. This was their home, their village, and they wouldn't give it up without a fight. Standing before the twisted, ancient oak tree, Morwenna instructed the villagers to join hands, forming a vast circle around the clearing. Closing her eyes, she began to chant, the villagers echoing her words. The ancient spell, once whispered in the solitude of her cabin, now filled the air, carried on the voices of those who had found the strength to believe. As the incantation echoed through the forest, the spirit materialized, its rage manifesting in a whirl of chilling wind and dark shadows. It roared in fury, an attempt to break their resolve. But the circle held strong, the united force of the villagers meeting the spirit's wrath. Morwenna, at the center of it all, channeled the energy of the villagers, focusing it towards the spirit. She could feel the spirit waver under their collective power, its form flickering. 
With a final surge of strength, she cast the binding spell, trapping the spirit once again. The silence that followed was deafening. The spirit's dark presence was extinguished, leaving behind a tranquil calm. As the villagers opened their eyes, a cheer rose from their ranks. They had faced their fears, stood together, and won. Morwenna, their hero, was lifted onto shoulders, her name chanted as a symbol of bravery. The villagers' joy washed over her, a bond to her exhausted spirit. As she looked over the cheering crowd, her eyes met Marion's, the young girl's face beaming with pride and admiration. Finally, Morwenna was no longer an outcast, no longer a subject of fear. She was a part of Emberfall, their savior, their protector. United, they had defeated the ancient evil, their victory testament to the power of unity and belief. They celebrated their victory and the newfound peace, the village of Emberfall once again a beacon of warmth against the dark silhouette of the Blackwood Forest. As our tale comes to an end, we leave the village of Emberfall basking in the newfound peace their ordeal a chilling memory. Through terror and turmoil, they discovered the strength within. But remember, dear listeners, not all shadows hold peace, and not all whispers fade away. As you pull your blankets tighter and glance around the familiar comfort of your room, remember our tale. For, who knows what stories your own shadows might hold. Thank you for joining us for another episode of our scary stories. Sleep tight, don't let your nightmares bite. Until next time, this is our Scary Stories signing off for tonight.